Today we're going to have a look at some of the, what I call the forgotten toolpaths in Mastercam. So the wireframe guys that you see down here and never think to click on because you have no idea how to use them. Now these toolpaths aren't forgotten in the sense that we don't know that they're there, we don't know uh, that they exist. They're, they're kind of forgotten, kind of like that uh, distant cousin that just shows up uh, suddenly on Christmas Day. Eddie? <laughs> To summarize what these toolpaths are, is they're going to basically allow you to do some 3D machining with what's labeled as a 2D toolpath. Looking at Mastercam's description, these are called wireframe toolpaths, and these are basically constructed the same way as you would construct the surface that they're named on. A ruled toolpath is very similar to a ruled surface. Lofted toolpath, again, same as a lofted surface. And we've got other options in here as well. So looking at Mastercam's definition here for the wireframe toolpaths, basically Mastercam's wireframe toolpaths let you create toolpaths similar to surface toolpaths, but with wireframe geometry. Use them to machine regions defined by wireframe geometry when you're not going to create the surface first. Creating surfaces, creating solid models is usually not difficult, depending on the complexity of the shape that you're dealing with. Uh, but for what we're looking at today, whether we have a solid to deal with or not is not really the driving factor behind it. Uh, what can be a factor behind it is uh, what level of master cam do you have? Maybe you don't have 3D toolpaths enabled. Maybe you've only got, uh, I believe it's called level one now. I'm not sure exactly what they call it. But uh, basically with the first master cam step is you've only got access to these toolpaths. And if you want to do 3D machining, you need to, to step it up to get access to these guys. So you can still do some surface machining, and uh, you can do that with these toolpaths. So the options that we've got here is Swept 2D, Swept 3D, Revolved, Lofted, and Ruled. And each has different characteristics about what it can do. And we're going to start by looking at Swept 2D today. So up on screen, I've got a pretty basic solid model here. There is a fillet that goes all the way around the top. And that's the feature we will be cutting with our swept toolpath. So before we jump right into the toolpath, let's have a look here at the definition. A swept 2D toolpaths are two and a half D toolpaths that are created by sweeping one boundary, the across contour, along a second contour, the along contour. So what they mean by two and a half D is that X, Y, and Z are not all moving at the same time. Basically, you're gonna have X and Y movements, then you're gonna have a Z movement on its own to adjust the level of cut, then you'll have more X and Y movement. Again, another Z movement to adjust the cut. Um, so only two at the most would be moving at a time, but there is a third axis that's in there just for positioning. We do have two different contours to define, an across and an along. So the easiest way to keep these things straight is along is the path that you want this shape to follow. And across is the cross section of the shape you're trying to cut. Okay, so let's hop into our swept 2D toolpath. Notice in here we don't have an option for solid chaining. I've only got a solid on screen right now, but I'm not giving an option for solid chaining. Hence the name of the toolpaths, wireframe toolpaths. So to do wireframe chaining, we need to have some wireframes. So I'm gonna make it a new level here and I'm gonna create all of my wireframe geometry on it. Okay, and we'll use that to drive our swept 2D toolpath. So we're going to launch into the 2D swept operation. As with any Mastercam operations, always very, very important here to read this prompt to figure out what Mastercam wants from you. So notice what it wants right now. Define the across contour. Thinking back to our definition, the across contour is the cross section of the shape we're trying to cut. So any one of these arcs here that represent the radius that we're trying to machine, that's what we're going to select. So I'm going to switch over to single chaining mode and grab any one of these arcs. So the direction of this chain does matter. This is going to dictate whether we cut from bottom up or cut from top down. So I want to go from bottom up, so I'm going to switch this back around. And notice with this chain completed, I selected my one entity and then it's complete. The prompt has changed. It's now saying to define the along contour. So what do we want this across contour to follow? So I'm going to switch back over to full chain, lock this into C plane chaining, and I'm going to select the chain at the top of the part. 
the direction here, again, this is my climb milling direction, so I want to make sure I've, I've got that uh, direction correct. And click OK. So notice we haven't got into the toolpath parameters yet. It's asking for some more information. Enter the intersection point of the across and the along contours. So those two chains we just defined, where do they intersect? They intersect right there. It's very important that we're getting the end point and not a center point of a circle here. So pay attention to that selection there. And now we're into our uh, toolpath creation menu now. So we can grab a tool, set some speeds and feeds, which I'm not going to do. I'm going to stick with this quarter inch ball. Over into the actual toolpath parameters. So a cross cut is just basically that. How big of a step do you want to take in your cuts along the across? So the cross section here, we're going to step down uh, at this distance. Stock to leave, so we could do rough and finishing operations if we wanted to. Rapid depth, uh, Z0 for me is the top of this face here, so I'm going to wrap it to slightly above that. Um, when you get into your toolpath creation, if you've created your toolpath and everything is good except for the toolpath is cutting through itself, you may need to check this box here. On the right side of the menu, we've got similar sections for the two different contours that we've selected. So across, across, and along, and along. So the first set of boxes are dictating whether or not we want to roll these cutters around sharp corners. So we've got options for none, sharp, or all. So we've got same settings down here for the along contour. Those will only affect the motion within the defined toolpath. The two settings here that really affect the resulting toolpath are these offsets here for across and the offsets down here for along. So thinking back to our across chain, the across was the cross section. So this guy down here that we chained from bottom up. So which side of that chain, given the direction that we have, do we want this toolpath to be on? So given that it's going in this direction, we want to be on the left hand side of that. So I've got this set to left. Then our along contour is this chain up here and it's going in this direction. And again, I want to be on the left hand side of that. So I'm again set to left over here. So I'll click OK. And presto, there's our 3D, or well, 2.5D toolpath. So launch us into a back plot and just have an idea of what's going to happen with this toolpath. Basically down to depth goes all the way around, so that's just the X and Y. Steps up in Z, and then does the same thing all over again, all the way around the part. And basically we're going to be repeating that all the way around this part until we get up to the very, very top of that across contour. And finished. So a couple things to point out here. Number one how long the toolpath took to calculate. It was basically instantaneous. Uh, number two, the size of the toolpath, 19.1K. So it's a very uh, small amount of code. We could even go into our analyze toolpath and have a look at the resulting tool motion. So you can see these arcs out here. These are complete G02 movements. Same with this one, same with this guy all the way up. So these are straight G02s to do complete the entire arc. These lines are all straight lines, well, the geometry is straight, so of course they're um, single line elements. Uh, so let's do a quick comparison here. If you were to machine this feature with a 3D toolpath, um, you might come in and select uh, one that is used quite often for features like this would be flow line. So I'm going to grab flow line here and make this toolpath up. So we'll grab all those rads, hit OK. Define our flow line. So we're going to try and cut with similar motion. So we're going to cut uh, along the part like that. And we're going to cut from the bottom up going in a climb milling direction. So that defines that with the same motion. And we'll use the same tool, speeds and feeds not worried about. I'm not going to leave any stock. Retracts will be the same. We've got an additional feed plane setting in here, but that's besides the point. And we'll set our step over to that same 100 thou that we set in the other tool path. I'm not going to do any filtering right now. That's unfair. So I'm just going to update that and then click OK. And let's have a look at how long this tool path takes to generate. OK, so not too long, but it took longer than the swept 2D path did. Also, look at the size of the tool path. This one's 149 kilobytes. So it's not a huge tool path, but again, just pointing out the fact that it is, in fact, bigger right now. Uh, we'll look at that in a second, but let's go and have a look at our analyzed toolpath and we'll see why this toolpath is different. And it's because this right now is all segments instead of being that uh, full G2 movements that our swept profile had. So we can 
get this flow line to output arcs by just coming in here and enabling some filtering. So I think if we filter this out, we'll find that, again, we'll have a look at the calculation time for this toolpath, which is uh, still going. There it goes. So we're down to relatively the same size now, uh, 21 versus 19. That's almost exactly the same. And if we come in and analyze these rads now, we'll see that they are full G2 movements. So back to being somewhat similar toolpaths now, comparable in size. The Swept 2D is still calculating faster, you know, give it that. And we're at a very high step over value right now. So it's once we get into tighter step downs, maybe 10 thou, you'll really see a difference in the calculation time between Swept 2D and Flowline. Now the reason for that, now Flowline, this is, you know, it's an unfair comparison for Flowline. It's analyzing everything about each of these surfaces around the entire part it could adapt if this surface was, you know, concave, then convex, and then moved up or down, left or right, in and out. And the toolpath would uh, adapt to that with our Swept 2D. We're limited to this, this shape and basically um, mimicking that shape all around the part. So that's a simple application of Swept 2D. We can get much more complicated than that. Um, our profile for the across can be more than just one segment. So we're going to modify this part a little bit and we'll see a more complex shape using the across profile. So I've gone ahead and updated this model. Basically, I've extended the top of the part up half of an inch, put a 0.4 radius fillet in here, and then a 100,000 radius at the top here. So let's go ahead again. We'll hop straight into our swept 2D profile. So instead of doing a single profile, this time for our, our across, we're going to be doing a partial. So my first entity of my partial is here. And notice it's asking for the last now, which is that guy up there. I can't get there with the branches in the way, so I need to guide it all the way up. Okay, and notice once I've completed that partial chain, the prompt will update. And this is where I'm going to define the along contour. So that's gonna, again, I'm gonna grab the top profile locked it into construction plane and hit OK. Where is the intersection point between these two defined contours? It's right here at the top. And everything should be the same in here. I'm going to stick with this 100 thou step over. Let's actually do this. Let's go a little bit finer. Let's go down to 25 thou and hit OK. And we'll have a, a look at how long this tool path takes to calculate. Uh, pretty quick. That was almost uh, instantaneous. That was on the screen as, as soon as I could click OK. One thing you can notice this time around, so at the top of my part, I do have a sharp corner here, and that motion is getting dragged down the entire part, which I do not want. So here's where our roll cutter around uh, will come into play here. So I'm going to click this uh, for the along. Regenerate. Again, this will be pretty much instantaneous rebuild here. And uh, there's our profile much better now. Okay, that's a pretty complex shape, given a, a very simple 2D motion like this and a very quick calculation time. And again, a very, very small toolpath. Let's maybe compare this again to our, our flow line. I'll have to grab some new geometry here. We'll update our flow line to make sure it's still doing the correct motion. And to have fair comparisons, we'll have to update our step over as well to be 25,000. We hit OK. Regenerate and see how long this takes. Two hours later. Well, not quite two hours, but probably closer to about two minutes. Uh, regardless, still, it took much longer than our swept path did. Uh, this flow line is filtered, so this is as, as close to as small as the tool path will get. So there's a size difference there now, a little bit more noticeable. Um, we're seeing some repositioning in here going on as well. So there's some maybe some work to be done there to get a, a better uh, toolpath from that. Maybe Flowline isn't the best option in this, in this situation. So there's some reasons why Swept 2D might be a good option. Even if you do have all of the 3D toolpaths available to you, there's some situations where it will you know, maybe just work better and be a, a better overall toolpath for you. So given that, uh, in the next few videos, we'll try and have a look at the rest of these toolpaths and cover each and every single one. Uh, if questions, comments, parts you'd like to see done, examples you'd like to see covered, let us know and we'll see if we can include those.